Okay, here we are sitting at Neil's Gap and week and a half summary. I just wanted to kind of go over what happened the first week and a half, my, my point of view of what happened. Um, a few days ago, I walked down, which is up there. This is just the very tip bottom of it, but Blood Mountain's pretty tough. Uh, that's the reason why so many people quit. Over here is what I always viewed as the quitting tree. And you see all the shoes that people just take off and throw up here. There's actually two of them. There's another tree a little bit farther over. And again, just filled, filled with tree, uh, shoes that people no longer need because they're not going to continue on. Well, we've got some great news. I'm going to keep going. We've had some tough times and we're going to make some changes. This is the Mountain Outfitters that uh, has some different supplies and things like that to make some changes that people need. A lot of people just stop here and grab a pizza and keep going, but I needed to make a few changes, so I'm going to document those and then we'll uh, keep going from there. Yeah. Alright, just continuing on from the quitting tree above. This is the planned water from, uh, from the, before I left for the airport. So, getting on the air, airplane, I decided to leave this one off, so TSA didn't kill me. So this is the only thing I had. This is what created my problem. Most people will recognize the Sawyer Squeeze top part, and you just attach that to a smart bottle. Everyone's got these on trail. Pretty common, and this is what I'll continue to use. This is my real problem. The extra Sawyer Squeeze. It's filled with a sponge. If I take this off, you can maybe look inside and see this gross black sponge in there. It's filled with charcoal. It, it uh, pulls everything out. From that standpoint, it's good, but you really don't need that on the trail. You end up with this uh, sponge here that is heavy. Even when it's completely empty, there's hardly any water in here at all, but it's very, very heavy still. And it also takes up too much space. When you got too much space taken up, you can't fill it with water and you become dehydrated. So. I'm going to leave this in the hiker box. I might not even do that to anybody. I may just throw it away. So we're just going to throw that away. We're going to continue on with this. And we're never going to be dehydrated again. So this will screw off, screw off there. And then we'll just screw, screw this on later. Um, the other major change that, that I'm making here today is this beautiful backpack. It was adjusted. Just, just recently, I feel light as a feather now. Uh, I was gifted this backpack. The person wanted to remain, remain anonymous, but I think the person from the bottom of my heart, I told him I could not get to Maine maybe with it, without it, but I can't still promise I'll, I'll get all the way to Maine, but I've got a lot better chance of making it with a lighter pack. It went down five and a half pounds from what I had before. Again, I had an eight pound pack that was empty eight pounds just empty and now, now um, the, the packs 48 ounces so everything else I lost seven pounds here today by getting getting a lighter pack so huge difference all right again so this is supposed to be a summary of the first week and a half first week I was on the, on the trail completely uh, rolled into Neil's Gap where I, where I met my family uh, taken three days not off completely. The first day was a zero, off completely. The second day I, I hiked a mile with, with my daughter out on the trail and then another uh, six mile hike after that. So leaving my family here, here today, uh, one of the most difficult parts of the, tra of the trail for me is le leaving them each day. So I am looking forward to con completing and continuing on, but I just wanted to give you an update from the quitting tree that I'm walking past. I love you.
Good afternoon. I got dropped off today at Hog Pen Gap, and I've got about a four and a half mile walk hiking up to Low Gap Shelter. So it's going to rain tonight or early tomorrow morning, and I'm trying to make the shelter. This is what the trail looks like today. I want to make the shelter before 8 o'clock. And if we look over here, the sun is going to give me about an hour and a half left to walk 1.3 miles. So should be able to make it to the shelter and stay warm and dry during the rain in the early morning. Have a great one. Thanks for watching.